Good morning. Welcome to Redeemer United Church of Christ, located in Sussex. I am Linda Grabner Smith, and I am the liturgist for today. We will begin this morning by sharing some announcements. Um, you may have noticed that today was our last day of outside worship at 9 o'clock in the morning, and also the last day that we're going to have this format of worship inside. So I want to just remind you to not stress about getting here at 9 o'clock next week. Um, you don't have to eat breakfast at home. It's going to save you a lot of time. You don't even have to clean any dishes because there are some hospitality angels that have gotten together and they're providing a nice, sweet, and savory breakfast for everyone that is going to start immediately at 9 o'clock. Sweet and savory. Wow. So make sure, um, don't eat breakfast ahead of time. Come with your appetites um, and have a fun uh, rally Sunday, next Sunday morning at 9 o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, September 25th. The, the, first, the, first breakfast. the first breakfast. Okay, all right, got those confused. <laughs> yeah, Pastor Julie reminded me, rally Sunday is the 25th, but next week is the beginning of our new worship format. We need people to do both hand mowing and trimming and large area mowing with a zero turn mower. You can sign up for one or both options within a week. Please use the Sign Up Genius link available in both the Redeemer Reminders or the Serve tab on our website. We need more people to cover the end of the season. And then our next big event after that is September 25th, Fall Fest, and we're looking for volunteers to serve half-hour slots. Please sign up for your slot through Redeemer Reminders, the Serve tab on our website, or the board in the Great Hall. And also, please share, like, and say you're interested to um, our Fall Fest event on Facebook. Help spread the word. The worship committee is asking for donations towards the purchase of a new pre-lit Christmas tree for our sanctuary this year. Help us reach our goal of $1,800. And you'll see that there's a really nice display in the Great Hall that has the tree drawn and all the marks that you make as we um, gather in those funds. If you are joining us online today, please take a minute to fill out our virtual who's wearing the chair located on the Zoom chat or in the Facebook comments section. And if you're joining us here for the first time, we hope that you find a very warm and friendly welcome from the people of Redeemer. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's go back. Apparently there were more announcements on the back of this page. Uh, Faith Exploration is looking to add our book collection for our youth. Please consider do donating a book from our list, and then please see our list in the Great Hall or in the Redeemer Reminders. And it is time to register for Faith Exploration classes for all ages. Please register online or use the paper forms in the Great Hall. Pastor Julie's Summer Series Sermon, Places We Go, will wrap up on September 18th, and you are invited to attend a dinner discussion of the book Atlas of the Heart on Sunday, October 9th at 5 p.m. at Bravo in Brookfield, Bravo Cucina Italiana in the Brookfield Square. Please RSVP in the Great Hall or online. And for those of you who may not have bought the book and while you were following this series during church, there's also a nice... Um, affordable book called the workbook of atlas of the heart that you can get on amazon and it has kind of crib notes and um, takeaways but then also really good questions if you want to kind of speed through that process before joining us at that dinner on the 9th of october next sunday after worship will be our congregational community engagement ministry team meeting any agenda items can be submitted to council at redeemerucc.org on the website. And another reminder that Waukesha County is in the medium COVID-19 transmission level and wearing a mask is recommended in the building and that you not sing while you're wearing, unless you're wearing a mask. So please be considerate of your neighbor. Uh, 
Um, okay, so if you're joining us on Zoom chat or in the Facebook comments section, please note that you're, um, make those notes in the comments section so that we know that you attended online today. And then, Redeemer's vision is to be a church more spiritually alive and growing, radically inclusive and engaged in our communities, and we are a church that is learning to love more. Our pastor is the Reverend Julie Eklund. Today we celebrate communion on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, and our welcoming music today is provided by Dan Stolper. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. So take my Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Please join in the call to worship. Like clay, we arrive at this time of worship. Shapeless and full of potential, we arrive. Like clay, we prepare for this time of worship. Stretched and twisted into formation, we prepare. Like clay, we enter this time of worship. Formed and ready for warmth, we enter. Now please join in singing the gathering song, Change My Heart, O God. Oh, 
Now please join in the prayer of invitation. Loving creator, maker of everything good, we are in your hands. Be with us now as we gather ourselves to seek your wisdom and strive to become the people you would have us be. Amen. Unlike clay, we actively resist the diverse ways God shapes us into what the world needs. We frequently struggle to trust in God's vision for who we could become. We anxiously avoid facing the heat that protects and sustains us. We humbly confess to these and all our shortcomings. May we join in silent confession. Amen. God graciously chooses us despite our self-destructive ways. God repeatedly mends our broken places and unceasingly delivers us from harm towards wholeness. All thanks be to God. Do we have any celebrations to or joys to share this morning? Yes, Sue. Well, good. Have a wonderful time with your sister Jeannie. Wonderful. All right. Uh, we have some anniversaries. We have Lori and Jeffrey, and I heard, oh, it's today. Lori and Jeffrey are celebrating how many years? Can you? 
40. All right. That's his grandma and grandpa. <laughs> and Andy and Carol F., do we have any other anniversaries? All right, let's move to birthdays. Charlie K., Madeline L., Brendan M., Hendrick M., Rick V., Ruby, Susan T., Nancy V., Sierra E., and Jonathan S. Who's here besides Ruby? I think everyone's out having fun Labor Day weekend. How old are you going to be, Ruby? Five. Well, happy birthday. Any other birthdays? Yes. Your nephew turned 57 today. What's his name? Carrie. Happy birthday, Carrie. Oh, Madeline. I mean, Ruby shares a birthday with Madeline. Yes. Your younger sister, Barb, on the 7th. We won't share how old she is. <laughs> Any others? All right, Ruby, you're the only person in the house, so we're going to sing. What a glad day, turn it's your birthday, all our love and greetings say. What a glad day, turn it's your birthday, may God's blessings upon you stay. We are friends, joy with you in Blessings upon you stay. And many, many more happy birthdays. All right. Now it is a time for the child and all of us. If my little ones want to come up. At this time, I want you to stay standing. Come over here in the middle. We're going we're gonna to do a little activity. You want to come over, Cora? Okay. All right. Any of our older people want to come up with them so they're not by themselves? All right. Have you heard of um, the song called If You're Happy and You Know It, Clap Your Hands? Have you ever done that song before? Yes? Do you know it, Ruby? Have you ever done it? Have you done it before? Okay. All right. Can you help me do that song? Okay, you ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, twirl around. If you're happy and you know it, frown like this. If you're happy and you know it, frown like this. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, frown like this. Is that how the song goes? No? What happens when you're happy? You smile, right? Do you smile when you're happy? Yeah? Oh, look at those beautiful smiles. Thank you for smiling at me. Today in our scripture, our scripture tells us how to be happy, how to have smiles. What do you think the scripture says to be happy? 
scripture says to be happy, we have to love our neighbors and do good things for them. Have you ever done anything nice for a neighbor or someone you know? Yeah. Have you ever baked someone cookies? Yeah. Have you ever brought over a plant to someone? No? Have you ever brought food for the food drive? Yeah. All of those things that we do make us happy and put smiles on our faces. So do you think we can do more things for people? Yes. Awesome. Can you help me pray? All right. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for happiness. Thank you for smiles. Help us to be people who love others. Amen. Thank you for helping me today. The scripture today is from Psalm 1. Happiness comes to those who reject the path of violence, who refuse to associate with criminals or even to sit with people who belittle others. Happiness comes to those who delight in the law of Yahweh and meditate on it day and night. They're like trees planted by flowing water they bear fruit in every season, and their leaves never wither. Everything they do will prosper. But not wrongdoers. They're like chaff that the wind blows away. They won't have a taproot to anchor them when judgment comes, nor will corrupt individuals be given a place at the gathering of the just. Yahweh watches over the steps of those who do justice, but those on a path of violence and injustice will find themselves irretrievably lost. This is the word of the still speaking God. May we know the nourishment and sustaining power of our creator today. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are gathered to be guided and comforted by your words of promise and good news. May the meditation of our hearts and the words upon my lips be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. As we continue to journey through Brene Brown's book of emotions, May we be gentle with one another and ourselves as we create space for vulnerability. I'm going to, Dan, I'm going to need you to be a microphone runner again today. How many of you have heard the song, I Will Always Love You by Dolly Parton? Okay, almost all of you. How many of you have seen the movie, the Bodyguard with Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston. <laughs> I love your look on your face, Karen. Yeah, Kevin Costner. Yeah. <clears throat> How many of you prefer the Whitney Houston version of the song? Okay, anybody? Die Hard Dolly. Die Hard Dolly. Got it. Okay, good. Did you know that a British pop singer named Sarah Washington also recorded a dance version of that song? You did? Karen did. John, no. I think Karen might be the only person. Would you recommend that version, Karen? Oh, you like it? I don't recommend it. Karen does, though. <laughs> if you want to dance, okay. Have you, when you listen to this song, have you really paid attention to the lyrics? Yes, there's some good lyrics, right? Some of the lyrics. 
and I wish you joy and happiness. But above all this, I wish you love. What do you think about joy and happiness? Are they similar? Are they different words to describe the same emotion? How would you define them? Dan's going to come to you with the microphone. How would you describe joy and happiness? Dan, Karen, tweet. Karen. In my opinion, joy is um, an element of happiness. Okay. An element of happiness. All right. Joy is temporary. It doesn't last forever, but happiness is a state of mind, and it's constant. Okay. That was deep. For me, joy takes my breath away. It's like comes unexpected. It's like, oh, where happiness is more something that I work towards and is more sustainable. Okay. John, John wanted to answer. <laughs> John, don't you have a microphone over there? For me, joy is deeper than happiness. So when Jesus healed people and all the people witnessed it, they rejoiced. And when you rejoice, that's a big part of joy. Mm -hmm. And God speaks about joy in heaven. There'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than one who does not. Go ahead, John. Okay, I'd see if I'm, can I hear myself? I can't hear me. Oh, it's not working. Wait. Oh, there you go. Okay, push the right button. Um, it's an overall warmth when you put the two together. Just Say that feeling again. feeling warm inside, all over, when you have joy and happiness. Okay, overall warmth. Okay. Any other thoughts? All right, so this week we are on Chapter 11. Uh, Brene Brown's book, Atlas of, Atlas of the Heart, titled Places We Go When Life is Good. How many of you have read and reached chapter 11? All right. In this chapter, she covers joy, happiness, calm, contentment, gratitude, foreboding joy, relief, and tranquility. And this morning, I want to focus on joy and gratitude and happiness. Brene opens her chapter with Dolly Parton's lyrics, and I wish you joy and happiness, but above all this, I wish you love, making the point that even when Dolly wrote the song in 1973, that Dolly knew that joy and happiness were not the same emotion. Brown opens with definitions of joy and happiness, but they are not her definitions. She says in the book that joy is sudden, unexpected, short-lasting, and high intensity. It's characterized by connection with others or with God, nature, or the universe. And happiness is stable, longer-lasting, and normally the result of effort. Brown then quotes Anne Robertson, a theologian and writer, on the difference between joy and happiness. And the definition that Robertson offers is relevant to us as studiers of scripture. Before I read this quote, just so you know, I did not have to take Hebrew or Greek, so I don't know if I'm going to pronounce any of these words correctly, but here they are. She says, quote, the Greek word for happiness is makarios, which was used to describe the freedom of the rich from normal cares and worries, or to describe a person who receives some form of good fortune, such as money or health. Robertson compares this to the Greek word for joy, which is chario. Chario was described by the ancient Greeks as the accumulation of being and the good mood of the soul. 
Robertson writes, Chario is something the ancient Greek tells us that is found only in God and comes with virtue and wisdom. It isn't a beginner's virtue, it comes as the accumulation. They say its opposite is not sadness, but fear." End quote. Brown defines joy as an intense feeling of deep spiritual connection, pleasure, and appreciation. So what happens to you when you experience joy? You don't know? Oh, Karen, Karen, thank you, Karen. <laughs> I laugh. You laugh, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, I, I also feel giddy. Giddy, okay. Giddy. <laughs> Any other thoughts? If I'm with people that I love, I probably would start hugging people. Hugging people, okay. Yeah. I have an overall feeling of lightness. Lightness. Hmm. I like it. So according to researcher Mark Kwan Johnson, even though joy is difficult to describe, which you all took a nice pause, right? Here are some attempts that he says, colors seem brighter, physical movements freer and easier, smiling happens involuntarily, and spontaneous weeping occurs. We've all, I'm sure, or at least on occasion, have cried for joy, right? Brown shares what she has learned from her research is understanding the relationship between joy and gratitude. Those two emotions feed off of one another. When one is present, the other is too. Brown uses a story that she shared in her book, Daring Greatly, about her daughter, Ellen, when she was in first grade. Here is the story. Brene says, we played hooky one afternoon and spent the day at Herman Park. At one point, we were on a paddle boat in the middle of a pond. When I realized that she had stopped pedaling and was sitting perfectly still in her seat, her head was tilted back and her eyes were closed. The sun was shining on her uplifted face and she had a quiet, smile on her face. I was so struck by her beauty and her vulnerability and the joy on her face that I could barely catch my breath. I watched for a full minute, but when she didn't move, I got a little nervous. Ellie, is everything okay, sweetie? Her smile widened, her opened, she opened her eyes, and she looked at me and said, I'm fine, Mama. I was just making a picture memory. I had never heard of a picture memory, but I liked the sound of it. What's that mean? Oh, a picture memory is a picture I take in my mind when I'm really, really happy. I close my eyes and take a picture so when I'm feeling sad or scared or lonely, I can look at my picture memories. She used the word happy, as we often do, but there's no question that I was witnessing joy, that swirl of deep spiritual connection, pleasure, and appreciation." End quote. Does anyone connect to that story? Can imagine what that feeling was like? I'm a water person, so I can certainly connect with that feeling of joy, being in the middle of the water with warm sun on my face. And I can feel the appreciation for God's creation, being alive and content, and feeling that peace. 
around me. Let's move on to the word happiness. Brown tells us that there isn't much agreement in research for the definition of happiness. She concludes two things about the lack of consensus. She says, one, happiness is often described by even prominent researchers, researchers as an ambiguous word that has been used historically as an overarching term to describe an entire realm of positive emotions. And two, she says researchers have examined happiness as a trait, part of who we are, not something we experience. Brown defines happiness as feeling pleasure often related to the immediate environment or current circumstances. So your environment. She goes on to explain that we need happy moments and happiness in our lives. However, she becomes more convinced that the pursuit of happiness may get in the way of deeper, more meaningful experiences like joy and gratitude. Our scripture reading this morning on Psalm 1 gives us instructions on how to find happiness. Our inclusive Bible, the first egalitarian version, uses the phrase Happiness comes to those. But if you read the NRS ver NRSV version, it uses the phrases, happy are those and but their delight. The psalmist tells us that happiness comes to those who follow God's law. The description that the psalmist offers for the definition of happiness is beautiful. Is there like trees planted by flowing water. They bear fruit in every season, and their leaves never wither. Everything they do will prosper. The psalmist gives us instructions on how we must choose. Happiness is achieved by our choice of actions. When we reject violence, disassociate with criminals and people who belittle others, we will achieve happiness. When we delight and meditate on God's law, happiness will come. If we follow Brown's definition of happiness, perhaps the psalmist makes sense. Happiness is a feeling of pleasure often related to the immediate environment or circumstances. If we choose our happiness by the choices we make in life, our happiness is related to the immediate environment or circumstances. That means we have to choose it and keep choosing it. We have to keep rejecting violence and those who belittle others. We have to keep following the law of God to love our neighbors. If we want to be trees planted by flowing water that bears fruit in every season, and leaves never withering if we want happiness. We must choose to meditate on God's call to love our neighbor. Doing the difficult work leads to those feelings of pleasure. Our happiness depends on how much we love others. Dolly Parton's lyrics mean a bit more now, perhaps, after looking through the lens of the psalmist. And I wish you joy and happiness, but above all this, I wish you love. Amen. May we now join in singing our song of reflection, Center of My Joy.
challenge to the world. Jesus, you're the center of my job. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my content. center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my And now the prayer family of the week are Barb and Bill Andrikopoulos. Contact information for them will be found in the bulletin or will be in this week's Redeemer Reminders. Did I say it right, Andrikopoulos? Andrikopoulos. <laughs> I'm not Greek either. <laughs> Thank you. And for prayer requests today, Pastor Julie is asking that we pray for Kyla, Stefan, and family as they mourn the loss of Kyla's cousin, Brittany. And Pastor Julie is also asking for prayer for John Olson as he makes medical decisions. Pastor Steve is asking us to pray for Jackson, Mississippi, that that whole entire community and capital of the state of Mississippi have relief with clean water. Risa Coleman is praying for her mom, uh, Diane Coleman, asking for prayers of thanks for all the prayers that mom, Diane, is fully recovered and now cancer free. And special thanks of gratitude for her caregiver, Pam Mitchell. Ann Matthews is asking for prayer for her 84-year-old mother, Mary. Uh, Mary fell and broke her ankle two weeks ago. She had surgery and is in rehab, but the progress is slow, praying that she can get strong enough to return to her apartment. And then I'd like prayers for my sister-in-law, Michelle Gulrud. Um, she was the one who became a widow to 12 kids. She is turning 50 this week and and the um, tradition that my family always had for the 50 year olds in the family um, we're preparing a special olive garden dinner for her celebration today so special 50 years for michelle may we now enter a time of prayer and meditation. We praise your abiding guidance, O God, for you sent us Jesus, our teacher and Messiah, to model for us the way of love for the whole universe. We offer these prayers of love on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, on behalf of your creation and our fellow creatures. We give thanks for Bill and Barbara Andrakopoulos for the many ways they serve you and Christ Church. May they continue to find happiness in all that they choose. We lift up all those that are committed to serving you and loving others. May they continue to be people who seek justice. We lift up all those that labor, and we give thanks for all those that offer fair labor conditions. This day, we give thanks and rejoice for Diane, cancer-free. We give thanks for her caregiver, Pam. We all owe our thankfulness to you, O oh God. We celebrate Michelle for 50 years 
on this earth. May you continue to guide her in the years ahead. God of salvation, who sent your Son to seek out and save what is lost, hear our prayers on behalf of those who are lost in our day, receiving these petitions and thanksgivings with your unending compassion. This day we lift up all those that are victims of violence and belittled. May they find peace, healing, and protection. May those that go without get their needs be met generously, for God is who provides. Today we specifically lift up Jackson, Mississippi. We lift up all those that are struggling with mental health and addiction. May they receive kind and compassionate care. We lift up all those that are elected to public service. May they lead and delight in the law of God. May justice bring us peace. We lift up all those that are struggling with their physical health. Today we lift up John and Mary. May your healing presence be made known to them. May those who direct their medical care do so with the guidance of the Spirit. May their family and loved ones find strength and love while caring for them. We lift up all those that grieve this day. Today we especially lift up Kyla and family. May they be held gently in your arms of comfort and peace. Creator God, you form us on the wheel of life as a potter molds the clay. Shape us into holy vessels, bearing the mark of your wise crafting, that we may remain strong and useful through years of faithful and obedient service. In Christ's name, amen. This morning we will be partaking in a modified intinction. The middle um, of the plate has the gluten-free. And if you are unable to come forward, um, Anne will be coming to serve you at your seat. We celebrate the divine spirit who hovered over creation and brought order out of formlessness. We praise you, Spirit. We celebrate the divine spirit who filled Jesus with power and wisdom and through him made divine life available to all. We praise you, Spirit. We celebrate the spirit who has been poured out on all people and leads us into the reign of God. We praise you, Spirit. And so as we gather at this open table, we recognize Spirit's presence among us, and we open our hearts to Spirit's influence. God, we come knowing that we depend on you for life and truth and love. We come knowing that you welcome us with open and accepting arms. We come ready to meet with you and be changed by the encounter. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the eve of his crucifixion, gathered his friends for a meal. During supper, he took a loaf of bread and gave thanks for it. Then he broke it and passed it among them with these words, This is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine and gave thanks for it. Then he passed it among them with these words, this is my blood which is shed for you. Take, drink, and remember me. Let us pray as Christ our Savior has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is, is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread. And, and forgive us our debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So now we eat 
and we drink and we remember Jesus and the divine love he showed us. Amen. Spirit, as we share this bread and wine, let it be a sharing in Christ's body and blood, Christ's life and presence. And may we embody your life, love, and presence in our homes and community. Amen. Amen. The bread of heaven which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. The cup of life which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gifts of God for the people of God come, all people, for all things are ready. This is the place to celebrate, leave all your worries behind, let us join hands, forget the past, come share the bread and the wine, we come here This world is a challenging place. Hate and hurt feelings we'll put aside. We must hold on to the promise of hope. Let our God be our God. This is the place to say. Let us pray together. Thank you, Divine Spirit, for this meal of remembrance and for coming to us as we have shared it. May the love we find at this table be reflected in our lives. May the power we receive at this table make us peacemakers and healers. And may the Spirit who fills us again at this table Lead us to be those who proclaim God's reign in every word we speak and in everything we do. Amen. And now responding as God's people, the cost of discipleship is bold and radical. It requires a countercultural giving of possessions and self. Let us risk the safety of ordinary and choose to build with God.
by sharing our tithes, our offerings, and our very selves. And then our thank you today is to Mary Olson for organizing the food for the Redeemer picnic. It was much appreciated gathering. Many thanks. And today our goal can will be for Neighbors in Need. Neighbors in Need is a special mission offering of the United Church of Christ that supports ministries of justice and compassion throughout the United States. One third of the Neighbors in Need funds support the Council for American Indian Ministry. Two thirds of this offering is used by the UCC's Justice and Witness Ministries to support a variety of justice initiatives, advocacy efforts, and direct service projects through grants. And then for you, in gratitude for your generosity, Redeemer, we give thanks for the joy that our life in Christ brings and for the hope and joy that you give to others when you participate and when you share your gifts of generosity, time, and talents. Every small action is significant, and we want to let you know that you are noticed and appreciated. You may leave your offerings in the back of the sanctuary as you leave today, online at our website, or mail them to the church office. Many thanks for your generosity. Now please join in singing our departing song, How Can I Say Thanks? say thanks for the things you have done for me, things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me, the voices of a Go forth in joy. Go forth in happiness. But above all, go forth in love. Amen. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you everyone online.
Thank you, Linda and Dan and John and Anne and Sue and Austin in the office. Thank you, everyone. Hi, everybody. Have a good week. Have a good week. Good to see everybody.